Hi, and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus. Uh, this video is how to make a stylish smartphone Faraday box part two, or perhaps the revenge. So uh, nine months ago, I made a video called Make Your Own Stylish Smartphone Faraday Box in 10 Minutes, something like that. And to my uh, shock and astonishment, uh, it got a whole lot of views. And um, I have since made a better box because basically what happened was I bought this box uh, to have a place to put my phone in and at that time there were all these revelations about the NSA, CIA spying, blah blah blah. I also read another article about how um, there is, like, if you have a smartphone, if certain malware is installed on it, then the phone can basically be powered on when it's off and used to spy on you, blah blah blah, right? So after I got this box I thought, well, you know, heck, I can turn it into a Faraday cage. How cool would that be? Because I'm a nerd, right? So I did. And uh, since then, like I said, the video has been surprisingly popular. And uh, a bunch of people have written and said, like, hey, it works perfectly. I love it. And a bunch of other people have said, no, it doesn't work at all. Uh, you big fat loser. So <laughs> it was actually a comment from uh, James R., uh, one of the viewers, he wrote and he said basically he, he somehow he uses, he has internet access via Wi-Fi and so he put his his phone, I think he made like a bag with this aluminum HVAC foil and he put it inside and it didn't block the Wi-Fi at all. So uh, after a number of these comments I kind of went back and, and retested my box and I discovered in fact it has a few faults. Um, I have to admit that like I said I, I made the box and I, I didn't, uh, primarily I wanted it to block signals from the cell phone network, which for my phone uh, in my area, when I have full signal strength, it does. Since then, uh, I have learned quite a number of other things. Um, I also, when I retested my box, I discovered that in fact it was not blocking Wi-Fi at all. It was blocking Bluetooth, not completely, but mostly. Um, and I assumed, I never actually tested Wi-Fi, I assumed that because Bluetooth is 2.4 gigahertz and because Wi-Fi, the most common flavor these days, is also 2.4 gigahertz, well, if it, can, if it can attenuate Bluetooth signals, it'll block Wi-Fi too, right? No, not at all. So then I was horrified that I had made this video and it was popular and, right, it didn't work. So, of course, I had to come up with a better version. So I did. So that's the story. Let's take a look at the new design. And then afterwards, I'm going to make a few comments about Faraday boxes in general and all the stuff that I learned. So, okay. So this is, this is the original box that I made for myself. And as you can see, it's got the aluminum foil. And I put this little plexiglass thing in the bottom so I wouldn't damage the foil. Um, there are a couple problems. In the initial video, I said, okay, this is aluminum HVAC tape, even though... Uh, the adhesive is not conductive, well, that should be okay, right? S not really. Um, I have since learned a whole lot more about Faraday cages and mostly via testing because I also discovered that uh, a couple years ago Oxford University and some other dudes from some other universities, they actually did a, um, it was like a mathematical simulation of a 2D Faraday cage and what they discovered is that many of the assumptions that we have about Faraday cages are probably dead wrong. So the thing to, to do is to go by experiment. So um, that kind of made me realize that many of the things that I thought I knew and many of the things that I had read before I made this one were not necessarily correct. And that also explains why some people like me make this box and it works perfectly and other people make it and it doesn't work. Uh, I've got my little meter here and I want to show you guys, gals and whatevers. Uh, so there's my, there's the meter. And basically, if I do this, you get zero ohms, right? But if I do this, uh, same piece of tape, I'm an idiot. There you go. Okay, so yeah, the you can see it's like kind of conductive, but kind of not, because I put multiple strips on here. Um, the new box that I made is pretty much exactly the same thing. But, it uses copper tape. And the reason for that 
is if we do the same test on the same piece of tape, we have continuity, zero ohms, and you can put it like a probe over here and a probe down here, and oh look, zero ohms, no matter what. Um, this is actually one of the things that uh, I discovered is that it actually helps a lot if the Faraday cage or box is <clears throat> one continuous piece of conductive metal. So anytime you have breaks in it, you're going to have possible signal leakage, and that's kind of bad. So what I did is um, I went on, uh, actually I got it from Amazon, you can buy it anywhere, you can buy it from uh, this copper tape, you can buy it from uh, music stores and stuff, because what this tape is actually used for a lot is it's copper tape and it's, it's adhesive like the HVAC aluminum tape, except that the adhesive on the back of this tape is actually conductive, and they use it for, I think, stuff like guitar, shielding guitar pickups or something, it's kind of like a musician's thing. So you can find it everywhere, and I didn't even know this existed. So when I did, I thought, well, hey, I'll make another new box, right? And as you can see, I did the same thing with the overlapping, and then in the... It's, it's overlapping, and that's awesome, right? Well, not really, because when you close this box... When you close the box, the front edge here, the copper makes contact. But on the sides and the back, there's a tiny, tiny gap between the copper tape, which means effectively this part is is connected. That's great. But anywhere you have any kind of gap along here, and the gap can be extremely, extremely small, down to like a tenth of a wavelength, which at like 2.4 gigahertz is something like, uh, I forget, I did the calculations before, but it's like possibly is like, like a few millimeters width. If, if basically like this edge here is not completely sealed against this copper edge, if there's any gap in the contact between these two pieces of copper, on this part and this part, a uh, signal can leak out. And of course it's not going to attenuate the signal and your Faraday box is not going to work as well. That is why sometimes when you buy Faraday bags, they come with, it's like a bag and it comes with like a seal. Some of them have like magical patented seals and other ones actually, it's a bag and it's kind of like a Ziploc seal and they give you this plastic clip that you slide over it. And the, the purpose of that is basically to squish the two conductive innards of the bag together and make sure that you have one continuous solid piece of metal and that way it works better and blocks signals more effectively. Okay, so um, so what I did is I tested this box and what I discovered was that it was still not, it, it was totally blocking cell phone signals, that was okay, but it was not blocking Bluetooth and it was not blocking Wi-Fi. And the test that I did was I had my laptop set up and I had a uh, or sorry, my smartphone set up for Bluetooth, and I have I have a wireless Bluetooth keyboard that folds in half. It's pretty cool. And I would just start typing in like a Notepad application. I'd put it inside the box, close the lid, and I could still type. The Bluetooth, when it was sitting right next to the box, it was getting right through. Then I tested with Wi-Fi, and basically I tethered my laptop to my smartphone via Wi-Fi, and then I basically used the smartphone as my internet connection, kind of as my internet modem. And of course, so the smartphone is connected to both the 4G cell network and via Wi-Fi to my laptop. And what I discovered is that the Wi-Fi was also getting through. So what I did is I added this guy. And what this is, let me get it out of here carefully and show you what it is. That's why the, the top lid here is actually already done. That's what, I, that's what I did for the first part of the test. I thought, well, I'll just switch to the copper tape. It'll work, right? No. So what I did is I realized that because of this poor seal around the edges, if you have any gaps, very bad. So what I did is I got this this uh, mat. It's kind of like a spongy workout mat. It's very spongy and it kind of slowly takes, you know, comes back into its normal shape. I cut a piece that fits in the lid and then I wrapped it in copper. And as you can see here, you have you get like little indentations when you close the box. So the idea is Instead of doing all the copper on the lid, you just get a piece of foam, you stick it in, you wrap it in the copper tape, and you can see, like, when you close it, this raised edge here is going to press into here, and it's, obviously it's not perfect because there's a little indentation here and stuff. You can see it, it kind of, like, goes down in there and stuff, but it, it provides a much better seal. Um, so when you close the box, this guy, this squishy part, is actually sealing much more effectively against the top, and then you have one conductive box, right? So I close it, and boom. So what I did is I took this box and I retested it 
what I discovered is that with, with this box, with the copper, and my new super duper lid, it will totally block cell phone signals for my phone, which is a Nexus 5X. Uh, I'm on a 4G network in Europe, so it's like 1.9 gigahertz. And I, re I tried again with the, the Bluetooth wireless keyboard. It did not block it. It still got through. And then I tried it with Wi-Fi, just this. And the Wi-Fi, uh, when I put it inside the box, I dropped from five, five bars of signal strength down to, I think it was like two or three, until I actually put the box uh, about uh, four feet away. That's like 1.2 meters. Then it dropped down to like a single bar, the Wi-Fi strength. And then when I took this guy with the phone inside and I moved him eight feet away from my laptop, which is about two and a half meters, then the signal dropped off completely. So that was kind of good, um, but it, it still wasn't blocking the Bluetooth. It was partially blocking it because when I did a test with the keyboard and, and the smartphone here as it is, it was like I'd start typing in my notepad application via the Bluetooth keyboard and what I would see is like instead of typing perfectly, suddenly like if I type the letter D, it would insert like 50 Ds or if I pressed carriage return, it would insert like 50 blank lines. So it was disrupting the signal, but it wasn't totally blocking it. Uh, and so for Wi-Fi, it was obviously attenuating the signal, but you had to be like within like eight feet of, of the, uh, the Wi-Fi transmitter. And within eight feet, it was still working, but outside of eight feet, it was blocking. Okay, that's kind of good, but still not good enough. So then what I did... <clears throat> Oh, that doesn't go in there. Then what I did is I made this bad boy. So you may have noticed that on uh, certain of these like Faraday bags you can buy online, it's like this nice decorative bag and then inside they give you an extra little baggie for the phone. And so you put the phone inside one bag and then inside a second one. Well, one of the ways to improve a Faraday cage is to actually make two nested Faraday cages, one inside the other. And these two, these two nested, uh, conductive metal thingies, they can't actually come into contact with one another, like the metal of one can't be touching the metal of the other. So what I did is I made my own little uh, Faraday bag here, and all I did is I took a Ziploc bag, and I took a piece of copper tape and, and kind of folded it over here, folded the ends over, and then just wrapped bands around like this. And then in order to give it some added strength and to prevent the, the metal of this bag from touching the metal of my box, I wrapped all of this in packing tape. So it's basically a Ziploc bag, copper, and then all wrapped in clear packing tape. So now when I take this and I stick my phone inside, fold it over, and put it inside my bag, because this is wrapped in packing tape over the copper, it doesn't make contact with this. So I put the phone inside the bag, then I close it, I've got a double Faraday cage, and then we're totally golden. It blocks cell phone network signals, Bluetooth totally doesn't work, uh, Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz sitting literally right next to the laptop with the Wi-Fi transmitter inside literally like zero meters away no signal at all totally blocks everything okay so if you build one of those it's totally gonna work a um, few little things the if you if you already made one with the aluminum tape you can just layer the copper tape over it and you only have to do the bottom you don't have to do the lid because preferably for the lid you would do this spongy foam thing instead so that when it when it closes this lid is gonna push your seal on there and you're gonna get a really good electrical seal around there and it's gonna work better and then if you care about totally blocking Wi-Fi and Bluetooth then make your own just grab a Ziploc bag and you buy the tape anyway you got some packing tape lying around make one of these little bad boys put the phone in put it all in there close it and this guy is gonna totally rock guaranteed the, uh, when I was kind of re-researching Faraday boxes, in addition to discovering what I mentioned earlier about um, this, this study that was done with Oxford and somebody, this computer simulation that they did, basically there's a lot of, um, there are a lot of videos out there like mine where, you know, people just say, here, do it, try it, and then of course people write and say, well, how come it's not working for me? And um, there are a lot of reasons for that. First of all, no two phones are alike. Uh, it depends on where you live, it depends on the cell tower, it depends on signal strength, it depends on where you are in your house, it depends on what other signals are in the area, it depends on all kinds of factors, um, including like the antenna design of your phone, 
Um, sometimes cheap phones, not fancy smartphones, sometimes cheap phones actually get better reception and have better call quality than smartphones do. It just depends on the make and model. So, like this old box worked for me with my Nexus 5X, where I am and where I live, um, but yeah, that didn't necessarily mean that it was going to work for you, and I, I don't have the equipment to really test it thoroughly. Um, that's another problem, is that when companies do uh, like EMI testing and they use like that, that type of testing and they use like Faraday cages, they are incredibly expensive and incredibly fancy. And the two things that are the most important are, first of all, you have to have a contiguous, a continuous piece of conductive metal. So it's far better to use this, this copper tape with the conductive adhesive than it is to use the HVAC tape. That's the first problem. And the second problem is the biggest problem with these like professional Faraday cages is the door seals. You know, if you've got something like this and you flip it over, how do you ensure that this is going to give you like a perfect seal and that you're going to have, a, you know, that, that the copper tape on the edges here is going to be touching all the way around with no gaps where it's not touching. That's kind of hard to do. So I picked this method because everybody's got a chunk of foam lying around. You only have to redo the bottom. You get your piece of foam, you stick it in, and, and there you go. Um, yeah, so those are, those are kind of two things that I learned um, since I've made the first version. Um, like I say, I'm, I'm, I can't, that's my smartphone, that's, that's the, the camera that I use, and like people were writing and saying like, oh, how come you don't like test it, like use a landline, blah, 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 because like I don't have a landline close to where I film videos, and that's my smartphone, and then if I, you know, have to like borrow a friend's phone and blah, 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 and set all this crap up, and um, yeah, I could do that, but I did all that testing on my own, so instead of making you sit through it, I'm basically telling you what I did, um, and even then, Kind of the point there is that because it works perfectly for me doesn't mean it's going to work perfectly for you and that's one of the problems with faraday cages it's like it's a science in and of itself like it gets really really complicated so you're going to have to actually make one and test it uh, like james r did and then say hey crap it's not working what's what's going on and then you know you kind of play with it and hopefully get it working but um so yeah, that's the, that is a stylish smartphone Faraday box Mark II. Hopefully there won't need to be a Mark III. <laughs> so uh, for more Techie Tipsy, scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.